Good evening, Monday night folks. This is Monday night live psychic chat on Facebook. I'm going to go over a few things uh, to get people to hop on and get their notifications uh, for tonight. And it usually takes a few minutes for everybody to get on and get ready. Hey, Lana. Hey, Julie. Um, so last week was part one about what is an aura. And tonight's episode, what we're going to do is go over how to see an aura. Hey, Paige. And everybody's jumping on now, so there's a lot of activity. Hey, hey Eva. Um, so let me briefly, hey, Melissa, go over what we went over last Monday night. And as you guys know, all of these episodes are going to be loaded up on my YouTube channel. It's under the playlist of Facebook Live on Monday night. So if you missed any of the past episodes, um, I'm going to leave a link to my YouTube channel in the comment section. So just go right over to the YouTube channel and subscribe and hit notifications. And then you can watch all the past episodes that we've gone over, which were some really good ones like life after death and do animals go to heaven and a lot of really uh, enriching topics. Hey Margaret, hey Shannon. So last week when we went over how what an aura was, we were talking about the light spectrum and how your personal aura is kind of reflected. Hey Jeff, hey Sandra, Hey, Melissa, your personal aura is kind of reflective of where you are in life and what you're learning. And so real quick, I want to go over, and you guys chime in if you have anything you want to add. Um, chime in on what you think your aura is. But here, here were some basic classifications of what the aura uh, represented or what it, what it is. Hey, David. So red was charisma, leaders, vibrancy, um, but it also can be anger and irritability. Yellow was really upbeat, creative, life force, well-being. Uh, greens were creative and hardworking, but perfectionistic, type A, attached to nature, very balanced, abundance, and restorative. The oranges were generous and social, but emotional type of people. Very empathic, but also very impatient. Um, blues were good leaders and good communicators. And good teachers and loyal friends. The real truthfulness, cooling and soothing. They're also peacemakers. And then the purples were highly psychic, empathic with others, but also can be very isolated as well. Hey, Ainsley. Hey, Christina. Hey, Wendy. Um, so, and then we also have dark brown and black, and that represents confusion, depression, ill health, or evil intentions. So, when I went over the information to present to you about how to see an aura, I did come up with some very interesting theories of my own. Hey, George. Um, so the techniques, let's go over the techniques, and if any of you know already or how to see an aura, chime in and let me know how you do, how you see yours. Thanks for the heart. Kisses back. Um, so many of the techniques, the one that I always used was to hold a white paper up and put uh, the body next to it and then stare at the hand or the edge of the hand until you see that faint halo that comes around the skin or next to the skin. And I always went by the color of whatever I got next to the skin against this white paper. Hey, Michael James Moyer, where have you been? Big kiss. Um, hello out to Cynthiana. So... But then, the more I studied, uh, I'm starting to kind of change that idea from what I found out in my research. And that was kind of mind-blowing. So here is, I'm going to go over one technique that's used uh, to see an aura. And like I said, mine was just to hold the hand or an arm up next to the white of a paper and to look at that halo and see what... 
uh, the color of the aura is. So you can also have a person stand uh, in front of a white or off-white wall or uh, a paper. And then you're going to stare either at the center of the forehead or the center of the chest between the shoulders. And you want to do that for at least like, like a count of 20, concentrating on the middle. And then what happens is you're going to use your peripheral vision to see that halo around the outer edge of the body. And it's going to kind of be glowy with light. And... So what everybody else is saying is when you when you see that glow, um, you're going to look at it through that peripheral vi vision, and it'll kind of expand with the light color that's attached to it. Hey, Sharon. Hey, Sandra. Sandra says, can you have a momentary color but keep long-term color, or am I just seeing how a person feels at the moment? Okay, remember from last week, Sandra, you have a base color, and that's where you are in the current life and what you're learning and what your vibration or your resonance is about. And then you have a layer on top of that that is the emotional flux for the day. Like, are you mad or pissed off for the day, but you're really a good person? And spiritually in tune, you may have a base of blue with a red red coating over the top of it. Hey, Betty Jo. Hey, Wendy. So you have a base aura, and then you have an emotional layer on top of that that goes with what's happening for the day. Now, the interesting thing that I found out, and this may blow a few of your minds. <laughs> I know it did kind of mine. Uh, there is a phenomena, a physical phenomena, called afterimage. Because I know that when you stare at something long enough, and then you bring your eyes away, you're going to see a color and you're going to see the outline of the image that you've been staring at. This is called the phenomena of after image. But the interesting thing about this was, hey Doris, um, the color, like, and I made this little chart up, and for each color I put a dot in the center part of it. And what I did was I took it and I did a test with my eyes. So what I did was I stared at the dot for like 15 or 20 seconds. And then I looked over to the white part of the piece of paper. The interesting thing was when you stare at green, and it could be that my green wasn't dark enough, but when I stared at the green, when you look over here, you're going to see a pink or purple circle okay when you stare at blue you're when you look over you're going to see an orange circle now when you stare at orange guess what it's blue and you can try this at home I did these with highlighters and actually David didn't believe me at first but I made him do it and <laughs> he was able to see that too now the red produces green so my theory is and let me see what you guys think about this theory if you stare at a person okay and the after image you're seeing as this glow on the outside is let's say green is their actual aura red chime in and let me know what you think because I'm I'm beginning to think that that's the way it is because like if you if you see somebody with an orange aura your eyes is is their aura actually blue and what you're seeing is the opposite in the after image now what happens with the after image is the cones in the eye are responsible for detecting color and the only three colors that they detect are blue green and red but they're like pixels on a TV. They can kind of form any color that is a combination of these. So what happens with the after image is uh, that the cones, after detecting the green, the cones get tired and all they can detect is the after image. 
which is the opposite of what the original color is. So that was really fascinating. So Sonia says, yes, like pausing your TV and burning an image. So do we need to really rethink the way that we're viewing an aura? Because what we're seeing is the after image. So what we're actually detecting is opposite of what we think that their aura is. Hey, Louise, tell me what you think. Tell me what you think about this, because uh, when I started studying the information on after images, I was like, you know what, we could, have, we could be wrong about how we're looking at people's auras. You know, we could be seeing the opposite of what they actually are, and we're not interpreting it right. So let me know what you think. How do you feel about that? Hey, Patty. Let me page back and see if there's any questions. Hey, Doris. Um, I'll try to get as many as I can. So let's see. Uh, okay, yes. Here's another question. Yes, you can have a brown aura. And remit, let's go back and let me look at what the brown... The, Sometimes, now, brown can mean very connected or very grounded for a person. But most of the time, browns and dark browns are confusion and depression. But that can go along with ill health, just like a black aura can represent uh, not only an evil nature, but also illness. And you know black is the absence of color, so what that would be is just the retraction of light deep into the body to conserve energy for the illness. Let's see who else has some questions here. Hey, Chastity. Hey, Doris. Um, does camera show actual color? Uh, Sandra, I think on the Curlian photography it does. I really am not sure about... Um, and Kathy at the Psychic Fair would be able to answer what kind of photography the RF photography is nowadays. Um, I, I think that the RF photography would be pretty accurate about showing the true color of what the person's aura is um, because we don't have this eye phenomena of after image involved with the RF photography, but um, to be sure, I would ask Kathy, the RF photographer, about what type of technique those cameras use. I know the Curlian photo photography is definitely not associated with any of this, and so it would be very accurate about what the color would be. So we have some more questions coming through. In a sense, another science experiment coming up for me. I, that was a great question. I shall get back to you with the results. Yes, Michael, get back to me and let me know. And Lana has a question. So she did the hand test around the edges is white. Okay, but remember, white is a combination of all the colors of the light spectrum. On last week's episode, uh, we went over all the colors, but all of the colors make up white. So remember, Lana, that just means you're very balanced in all of the different colors in your light spectrum. So you've got a little bit of healer, a little bit of creativity, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of green. So that's very good that you have white in there. So Melissa says, if you view yourself in the mirror, is it possible to see your aura? Yes, and I, I'm so glad you said that because that was one of the other techniques was to stare at yourself in a mirror. So that way you can see your own aura. So you're, uh, And now when you set up your mirror, uh, you want to stare, remember, at the center of the body, either here or here. And you want to have some kind of either white or off-white background behind you. So what you can do is like drape a sheet behind you if you don't have anywhere. And actually, you can drape a sheet over a door and just set up a mirror on a chair opposite you in front of the door. And that's always good, too. So 
Yes, a lot of people will see, David brought up a good point, a lot of people will see the auras not with the physical eye, but with the third eye. And I think that that's the most accurate because you are sensing or feeling the actual color or radiation from that entity's true nature or true spirit or their auric color. So that is a very good point. Chastity has a comment. I've seen a few people with sparkling auras. Absolutely. One year at Scarefest, Amy Allen mentioned people she sees with gifts will have auras that sparkle. I found this so interesting. And that, chastity is probably seen with the third eye and maybe not the physical eye. Um, just for my own um, instance, now... I will see a sparkle or a shine from a person's eye from the light that's coming out of the eye. I haven't ever seen a sparkle on the aura, but each of us interprets it in a different way and experiences it in a different way, I'm sure. So, hey Jamie, hey Barbara, kisses Barbara. You guys, uh, I'm going to throw a little recommendation out for Barbara Bacon. She has the most wonderful... Uh, shop called Crystal Crazy and I love to get my gemstones from there and actually that's where I got that it's a beautiful blue lace agate uh, and I got that from her shop so if you guys want some beautiful crystal and gemstone specimens there she is in the feed check her out go to her shop and check it out but um Anyway, let's check our time. We're doing okay. So I can take some more questions on auras. Did anybody have a question about any particular color or combination of colors? We were talking last week about somebody who had a silver aura, and they wanted to know uh, what about having a silver aura, because um, not a lot of references will bring up a silver aura, but I feel like the silver is a combination of a white aura with blue overtones. And it will give it that silvery hue. Um, and so you can have a combination of different things. You can have a pink aura, which is not referenced in a lot of, um, you know, books and things. A few, but not many. So... Let me, let me ask you a question then. If I were to have a pink aura, what would that be a combination of, do you think? My question to you, what would be a pink aura? Okay, let's see if there's any other ways to view this aura. Uh, many times you will have to stare at the center for at least 60 seconds. I usually do a count of 20. That pretty well gives that glow on the outer edges that you're looking for. At first, you may see white. A lot of uh, instances say that you will see a layer of white first, and then the actual color will be coming out after that. But you've got to maintain your gaze here and look at this through the peripheral vision. So Jamie says pink would be red and white. Yes, I agree with that. Red and white. Okay, but let's think of how that would work. Um, so it could either be a base coat, a base layer of red, like a real charismatic person who's having a really balanced moment and their emotional layer was white, and it blends together to make the pink. Or it could be the opposite. It could be that um, you have a really balanced person with a base layer of white, but they're having a really bad, <laughs> irritable, angry day, and so they've got a, an emotional layer of red over the top of that that's blended with their base layer to make pink. So I guess individually you'd have to look at um, the person and their personality traits and what kind of day they're having. <laughs> Let's see if there's any other questions here. Hey, Jackie. 
Okay, so here's another test question. And let's see if you guys will get it right. See if you've been listening. Okay, if I were a very psychic person, but I'm very introverted and isolated, what color would my aura be? Let's see if you guys can get that one, just from what you've been listening to. So, Jamie has a comment. Uh, oh, she okay, she loves the uh, interesting topic. And, well, thank you, Jamie. Um, I'm glad that you're enjoying the Monday Night Live broadcasts. And if you want to see past episodes, I'll leave a link to the YouTube channel down here in the comment section after we get done. And you can go back and browse through. It's in a playlist. It's called Facebook Monday Night Lives. And you can go through all of the other videos if you want. Now, you guys, if you like this and you want to share it, just tap on the screen and share it to your friends. And that way they can join in the fun also. So Julie says, I was told my aura was orange 20 years ago and now it's bluish green. That coincides with your color dots on the paper being opposite. Yes, it does. And I just realized that it's... You know, it could be that after image. But you know what, Julie? Um, what we really need to do is to get you into an aura photography and see what the photographer picks up. And I can find one for you. Just uh, private message me. I've got a couple of people that do aura photography. And I can forward their personal information to you. So, uh, you know, Julie, when I was doing this research this evening to present to you guys, um, in my aura photography from the past, now this isn't recent, mine has always been really red and orange, which is like creative and leadership and charisma and that kind of thing. But knowing this, um, if someone was to look at me and they said, okay, I see red, my aura could actually be green. So the only way to tell for sure, unless you're using your third eye, is to get your aura photography done. Um, and so if you want to use your third eye to try to see an aura, what you would need to do is to calm and center yourself. Go ahead and have that person stand next to a white or an off-white background, though, still. And then you want to try to see, like, roll your eyes up in your head or even close your eyes just a little bit to where you can barely see them. And then try to see from, shift your focus to here and try to see from here instead of from here. So that would be um, one of the ways I would try to attempt with the third eye. Now, if you don't have any experience with your psychic abilities, or opening your third eye you're probably going to have to do some exercises with that before you attempt this um, so yeah Jennifer Welch hey uh, hers okay yes purple Sharon says purple Melissa says purple yes purple with a with a green aura yes Lana you're correct Melissa purple and yellow is silverish absolutely Sonia says Beverly and Jim Chesney now on Kathy's camera. Okay, so let me shout out to them, and I will tag them in this broadcast. Beverly McChesney and Jim McChesney have um, our old friends, uh, our photography camera, and Sh uh, Sandra, are they doing the photography at the um, fairs? Do you know? Have they started doing those? Just let me know. Um, Sharon says, my picture showed purple around my head, green around my shoulders, and blue on my chest. Yes. And two, those off colors, remember, can be blended from other colors, like the pink. The pink is a blend of the red and the white. So, um, and then a lot of practitioners that do aura photography can actually sense and see other entities that are uh, attached to your aura and they can give you a little mini reading about those entities that are attached to the aura and it is about that time of the evening folks thanks for the thumbs up and the hearts 
Uh, remember, next week is going to be how to change your aura. How to change it from the color it is to the color you want it to be. And that's going to be fun. Now, don't forget that next uh, next Sunday, okay, not this Sunday, but the next one, the second Sunday of every month is the Haunted Items Hunt and the free giveaway. And this is coming up for the free giveaway. It is a Sorarsi... So, so, I can't say it. Crystal, it's a crystal. Dadgummit. And that's going to be on the giveaway next Sunday along with the Haunted Items Hunt. So tune in. Um, I hope you got your name on the post for the giveaway. Please share my post. Tap on the page and share it to your friends. Um, follow up on my YouTube channel and subscribe and mark notifications. Uh, and then hit live notifications when I go to do the teachings. You'll get notifications that, that I'm on air. So kisses from Kentucky, everybody. And I'll see you next Monday night for How to Change Your Art.